Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint some rustic boots with some flowers in them. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to show you some really unique techniques for the background. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's in in chat today while I paint. So if you've got questions, you can ask them in chat and we'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, I'm using a, nine, a 12 by 12 inch canvas today, a little bit larger than I normally do. This is the archival watercolor canvas board from Fredericks. Um, they are kind of a smooth texture, so um, but if you, you can really use any size you want to for this project. I like the um, firmer uh, canvas boards for um, when I'm going to be doing texturing, just because um, it's a little bit easier when you've got a, a wrapped canvas. Um, sometimes it can be kind of a little wobbly in the middle where there's no support behind them. So um, that's why we're choosing this one today. Um, I'm going to be using a variety of different brushes. I decided to go ahead and go with kind of my firmer brushes. These are the Princeton Aspen series brushes. I'll mention the, the different sizes as I use them, but all of them are marked down in the description. I went through and um, made sure that they were all listed down in the description as well as where you can buy them at the Brush Guys. Um, so if you're interested in getting those, be, and be sure to use the code if you use uh, from the Brush Guys because there's a special code for 5% off. Um, I've also got a few other brushes over here that are also Princeton, but they are um, from the red handles are their velvet touch lines. So I've got a couple blenders and angle brushes, and then I've got a couple specialty brushes just for um, doing some splattering and um, possibly some texture on the canvas. But we'll again, mention those if we use them. I'm not sure. I just grab kind of what I think I might need and um, then we kind of work it out as we go. I've also got a palette knife just to do some mixing, color mixing. I'm not really probably going to use it on the board today. I've also got a couple of sea sponges um, and I've pre-dampened them. So I've just kind of soaked them really well um, so that they're saturated with water, but you can see there's no water coming out of them anymore. I've kind of wrung them really um, well dry, but they are they're still damp. And then I've also got a um, pastel pencil just to do some drawing. I might use chalk, um, just regular school chalk later. I don't know. But when we get to the boots, we'll need it. Um, the only thing we're going to need to mark out as far as our background goes is going to be just sort of where the boots are sitting, that kind of line um, at the very bottom of them. So I'm going to probably use, I didn't pull it out yet, probably use some painter's tape when we do that. So you might grab some paper, painter's tape too if you have it. And then if you've got gloves, that's a good handy thing to do, to have. Um, we are going to use a stencil for the background today. I, I haven't done this in a very long time. I used to do this a lot on my other paintings, but I think this one, since there's so much of this background showing, go ahead and show the picture, honey. Um, so since there's so much of the background showing in this whole area back here, um, I decided it would be a really fun one to try a stencil. So I've already, I've got a stencil here that we will be using. It's a little really large one. <laughs> we don't need this big of a stencil, but I just happen to like the pattern. So I'm going to be using this one for some of the background, but we're going to do a really, really subtle. It's not going to be like an obvious stencil. It's just going to be a very subtle pattern in the background. It'll be really fun. And then the pl plastic will also kind of add some effects. So if you're going to do a stencil, you're going to want some sort of a foam pouncer for that part. If you don't have a stencil and don't want to do it, then you can leave that part out. All right, let's go over our colors. I've got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green yellow shade, phthalo blue green shade, ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, quinacridone magenta, cadmium red light, unbleached titanium and titanium white, and then this is my gloss glazing liquid from Golden. It's got a little extender in it, so it'll help us. And I have hot chocolate. <laughs> and Mark's got hot chocolate. With marshmallow cream. Welcome, everybody. Hope you are uh, enjoying your Saturday, staying warm. We've got some storms coming heading our way, so we're going to get some snow tomorrow probably, which will be fun. This first time we've snowed, I don't know how long. It's been a long time since we've had snow, so been, we're in Arkansas. Uh, we don't get it very often. Yeah, it's been about three years. Yeah. All right. And I could go three more. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put some gloves on because I got my nails all prettied up today, and I don't want to get them messed up. So for Valentine's Day, you know, they're very sparkly for Valentine's Cut Day. Cut your nails, did? I did my nails. These are actually press-on nails. <laughs> they're like uh, stick-on. I've never tried them before. I can't remember. They're pretty uh, something street 
color street maybe can't remember but um anyhow they're like stickers that are it's real nail polish but they're stickers so it's kind of it, it they it was fun it they were easy much easier and then i didn't have to worry about them drying i only had to cut your fingers apart once <laughs> Did I? I had these two fingers. I glued both of the fingers because I got this one done and I was like, oh, you know, there's enough there that I don't want to like cut it off. I just want to like use it. So I kind of stuck it onto this nail and then I realized I had no way to cut them apart. So Mark had to cut my <laughs> fingertips apart. Lesson learned. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So um, I want to go ahead and make up a couple of grays for our background. I went and um, covered the background of this canvas with a light coat of unbleached titanium. So just put like about, oh, maybe a little bit less than that, like about a quarter amount right here in the middle. And then I just used a cloth and wiped it um, on. You can actually see a bits of the cloth kind of got embedded so that's what all these little marks are which is fine um, it just adds to the texture of our background so I'm just gonna get oh not too much black just a maybe hmm, that much and then a little bit more of the ultramarine blue don't need the hair put that away okay <laughs> okay. I'm combed my hair that always happens when I comb my hair I end up getting weird hairs and uh, showing up while I'm painting okay no I guess that's a lesson to not comb my hair I don't know <laughs> or just that's fine by me <laughs> I, I realized I went out like yesterday. We went out to the grocery store, and when I got home, I looked at my hair, and I had like this big old knot in the back. Like I hadn't combed my hair before I went out, and I didn't even think about it. It looked fine from the front, but um, yeah, I think it was pretty pretty disastrous from you, the, from the back. I just you can tell your husband noticed. Yeah, he yeah you you were sure to alert me that I was going out with bedhead. <laughs> I guess the solution would have been to wash my hair. <laughs> Too many steps. Who wants to do that? Okay. I'm going to get, so I've mixed up that. This is actually basically Payne's Gray. If you've got Payne's Gray, you can grab that. Um, ultramarine Blue and Carbon Black, Payne's Gray. Um, so it's got probably maybe two parts blue to one part black. And then I'm going to grab... Probably about oh, two parts white. And I'm just going to use what's on my knife there. So I'm not going to, I kind of smushed off as much as I could get. And I'm just going to use what's left on my knife here with this white to make a softer gray. Look at how pretty that is. And you can make it more blue if you want it more blue. I might add a little bit of blue to this, but this will just give me a kind of a contrasting um, gray to use. And I'm going to scrape up most of that and just kind of plop it down in a smaller area. As small as I can get it, because the smaller this area is right here, the longer it'll last for me. It won't dry out as fast. So if you've got it all spread really thin, it's going to dry out super fast. We don't want that. Okay, I'm just going to use my sponge to wipe this off, because I'm going to use this on my, with my sponge. So I'm going to go ahead and... Put a little on my sponge. I just want to make sure my sponge doesn't dry out before I get to use it. Okay, and then again, ultramarine blue and burnt umber. This time with a little bit, maybe a little bit more burnt umber than ultramarine blue. Making a lot of this. We're going to use it in the boot as well. So um, we're going to make kind of a dark brown gray. The blue just kind of neutralizes that brown, makes it a really lovely gray. Um, but it's going to have a lot of warm tones to it because it's more brown than the blue. If we wanted a, a cooler gray, we just add more blue to it. But this is our cooler gray. We've got the blue and the black together for that. And then this one will be our warmer gray with the browns. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did here. And I'm just going to grab some white, use what's left on my knife, and just mix that up. Look how pretty that gray is. Nice brown. So I've got the blue gray, brown gray. This will be perfect for our background. All right, I'm just gonna wipe this on my sponge again. 
All right, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and do my stencil first, and then we will work around it and blend it in. And that way we'll have it kind of in the background, it'll be subtle, and then we'll have plenty of time to kind of like work over it and mess it up. Because I don't, I don't really want a obvious stenciled look. I just want it to be like, oh, there's a pattern back there. What is that? That's kind of what we're going for. So I just want to lay this out so that it looks pleasing to the eye. Um, and let me see. Wanna... No, that's pretty good. Okay, so let me grab my foam pouncer here. And I'm gonna get just slightly wet. It just helps it. And I'm gonna get, let's go ahead and use the brownish gray. I think that'll be a good one. Maybe a little bit of both. And I'm just going to, I don't want it to be super dark. So I just want it to be like a couple shades darker, maybe one or two shades darker than what we've got in the background currently. Let me see. Oh yeah, that's perfect. And then I'm just gonna kind of fade it out in places. So I'm not gonna like actually do like a very good job of it. You know, like I'm just gonna let some of the stencil be faded out, you know, so maybe around the edges, it just kind of blends out and doesn't, I think I'm not, I don't, yeah, see how that's doing where it's like faded out and things, that's what we want, okay. And you can see I've used this stencil several times because you see the gold and things that I still have in there um, from where I didn't get it cleaned in time, it's probably going to have some gray in it now <laughs> just fine don't get it too wet though that's one thing I'm gonna get a little bit of the darker now and I'm going to take it over here and just really press it down so that I get all that moisture out of it because if it's too wet then that's when it's gonna seep up underneath your uh, underneath your um, stencil and kind of create a mess so do it quickly don't like again don't worry too much if it's perfect. I think the more elaborate the, the pattern is like this one, the better I feel like for this kind of thing because you that way um, you don't have a real obvious um, pattern that your eye is kind of drawn to. Okay, that's perfect. Perfect. That's all we need. Um, and then uh, ideally you take that stencil straight to the sink and rinse it out, but probably not going to happen with mine. Okay. So Did now I'm just going to, to um, no, it's fine. It'll be all right. It's, it's already got some. I didn't put a very ha heavy application. If you, if you did a lot of paint, you definitely would want to get it off there, but it, it's going to be fine. Okay. So that is still wet, but I'm going to go ahead and just work as if it's not wet. And I'm going to take my paper towel and just dab off any moisture that's obvious on there. Got a quick question. Okay. Uh, they were asked if they don't have a stencil, what should they do? Um, you could do some like random lines or you could take like bubble wrap or um, I've got the, that's why I grabbed this plastic wrap and you could do um, patterns with or dish dish. Uh, I've got like, go ahead and grab that basket. I think it's up there. The, no, it's actually behind you in that blue tote right there. That, yeah. I've got a whole bunch of household items that I've saved over the years that have interesting patterns on them. So there's like dish towels, trivets, this like shelf liner, um, bubble wrap, got other trivets here, um, stuff that uh, I think that was from a Lego set. Um, so uh, the stuff that kind of goes around your produce, any of this stuff is going to make an interesting pattern. So just kind of use something, make a couple couple of passes with um, just a very light touch. Um, when you're using stuff like this, what I do is just use a brush and just brush it on like really uh, uh, loosely just kind of like how we did the stencil where we kind of skipped around. So just, you can see how I do here. Actually, you can see the different way I skipped around here. Just brush it on kind of loosely and then just press it really good. Try not to smush it like that, but you know, just press it straight down. Oh, I just got paint all over. <laughs> Little bits of paint all over it. 
Um, but anyhow, so you get the idea. So, um, yeah, you can use anything. You don't have to have, you know, a fancy stencil to do this kind of technique. Just something that looks kind of interesting. Bubble wrap does a really good job. It's kind of really pretty cool. All right, so let's do, I'm just gonna kind of glaze over this whole thing, I think. Just kind of get a start of like kind of a warmer gray. So I'm gonna get some of this glazing medium and some of that ultramarine, um, I'm sorry, burnt umber color. And I'm just gonna glaze over quickly. Don't do this slow, do it quick. And then I'm gonna take my sponge and just smush it around. I'm only gonna do half at a time because that way I, I, it doesn't dry. If I didn't, if I let it, if I did too much of this, then it would dry too much. So I'm just gonna go ahead and smush it around. I actually have enough on my sponge here. I don't probably need to do much more. Ooh, I'm painting with my left hand. How about that? <laughs> it's about as good as it gets right here with my left hand. Okay, so you can see it's kind of just kind of muddied it up. It's dirtied it up. Got that darker color kind of. I'm going to push the darker colors around to the outside a little bit. And then I can take a, like a paper towel even or a clean sponge and just sponge off areas where I want it softer. So maybe in here. I don't want as much of that color, so I'm just gonna kind of sponge it off. It might take off some of our stencil. You can see really the only part of the stencil that's showing is like right there now. So I could go back in and do my, more of my stencil. I probably should have done it a little bit darker maybe. There we go. Just kind of wiping it off. And the background, if you look in the photograph, it's very kind of messy. So it's not, um, we're not trying to like make this look clean and, you know, or like um, smooth blends. Not worried about that. Not worried about smooth blend at all. I'm just going to go ahead and grab my plastic wrap, whatever kind of plastic you've got here. I'm going to make a sort of a ball, and but look at it and kind of make sure that it's got it's not just like smooth plastic. You know, I want some of the ends of the plastic showing. I'm gonna grab some of my darker and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grab that darker gray here and I'm gonna run it in my light gray. So I'm making kind of a medium gray here. And I'm just going to run it. I'm gonna turn my I could also like lay it flat over the whole thing. I've, said, I've done that before. But this just gives it a different look to the sponge. So it's a little bit more angular in some ways, depending on the kind of plastic you use. This plastic's not particularly firm. If you've got a firmer plastic that, you know, like holds its shape a little bit better, it's gonna, or like a plastic bag or, or something like that. This just came off the canvas. That's all I'm using is just what came off the edge of the canvas. So nothing fancy here. All right, so that's pretty good. I think I want a little bit more of this. And what this does is just keeps you from having like obvious repeat patterns. So make sure that when you do this, that you're turning it and, and making sure that a different part of the plastic is always being um, touched to the canvas. Otherwise, you're going to get a repeat pattern and you don't want that. That's kind of going to be too um, obvious. You don't want this to be obvious. We want it subtle. So, okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. At this point, um, we probably just need to go ahead and dry it completely. So I'm going to have Mark do that really quick. And then we'll come back in and do our sketch on it and do some more... Um, on it so let me clean out my brush while he's doing that the glaze is going to make it take it a little bit longer to dry than it would maybe normally take so just kind of know that going in that the glaze kind of 
it has an extender in it, and so it'll it'll kind of make your drying time a little bit longer. I'm gonna try to get most of that out of my pouncer. Um, that's close enough. Just turn that over. My sponges are pretty good. I just kind of mostly got most of that out. I don't think I'm gonna put that in there. The sponges will really like soak up a lot of that water and you'll have a big puddle mess. All right, so while he's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and spray that down and mix some more of my lighter brown gray. So get a little bit more of this ultramarine blue burnt umber gray here and make more of my light brown or light gray from it. I used it all up. Okay. It's just in. Thank you, hun. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to turn it. So, yeah, I think like right there. Well, I want, actually, I'm going to turn it like that so that this, because this is going to be in my open area. So this will show right here. And I don't, I don't know if any of that's going to show because I think my, my flowers are going to start here and kind of go up to right here. But this definitely will show. So that'll be good to have it right there. I'm going to use my hand and just kind of wipe this down so that I have most all of my, my, uh, fuzz off of there. I had fuzz from my paper towel. Okay, so I'm going to use my sponge and get a little bit of both of these grays. Most uh, I want kind of more of the darker though here now. And I'm going to run it along that edge and really kind of darken it up right there. Don't be afraid of going really dark, but then have your other clean sponge or, you know, paper towel or something available so that you can sponge off that edge so that it's more subtle. See? Okay. So that's good there. And I'm kind of just running it almost in a circle here to... Sponge that on and then soften it up. Okay, so pretty happy with that, I think. And again, we could use instead of a sponge, you could use a you could use a pattern of some sort here. It's up to you. Whatever you want to do. This this kind of background is really fun to do. So just kind of let yourself get creative play with it. If you mess it up, you can always paint over it, right? So don't, uh, don't stress too much about it. I think that's looking really good though. I'm yeah, happy. it's really good. I'll play with it. <clears throat> when I do this with my kids' classes, I would do stunt, I would do stamps too. So I'd have different kind of stamps and they could use stamps in the background kind of do subtle stamps and then paint over them. Um, so what were you going to say? Stencils are kind of hard for kids, so stamps work a little bit easier. I have my digital calipers over here. Uh-huh. Can I come over and measure your paint? <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> I got them right here. I don't care, I guess. <laughs> I don't know why. It doesn't, no, it's fine, honey. It's like a quarter. But it's not like an engineering measure. It's fine. It's Nobody fine. cares. <laughs> People ask all the time. You just go ahead and paint over there. I'm just going to measure your paint. Okay. Uh -oh. 18 millimeters. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> when should I start the video? <laughs> okay, so we've done this right. Uh, we cannot hardly see that pattern anymore. It's there. If you look carefully, it's there. But um, this is this is what we want right here. Okay, I'm I'm happy with that. I'm going to do one more pass and kind of do a little bit of splattering. I'm just going to take some of the dark gray 
with my fan brush. And I'm gonna have you dry this one more time, hun. Okay. And just splatter. It's not in our picture, but I feel like it adds to it. So I'm just gonna do that. It'll kind of add some speckling, another layer. It's all about layering. You're doing this kind of thing, just layer upon layer of detail. And it gives you something to kind of draw the eye around the canvas. Okay, that's good. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see how that looks. Very good. All right, I'll let you take that, dry it one more time really good, and then we'll put on our drawing. Okay, I'm just gonna soak up some water in these and just kind of let them off, set them off to the side on a paper towel so that they stay damp bef so that I can clean them out later. I don't want to try to clean them out in my water right now because they'll just dirty up my water really bad. And then I'll need a new water, which I don't want to. Look at how much of my water it's soaked up, though. <laughs> I have, like, half my water gone. All right. Um, let me see if I want to mix anything while he's doing that. I think we're good. I'm pretty... Pretty happy with that. Actually, you know what? I'm seeing some yellow oxide, uh, but I think I can. I think I can mix it, so I won't worry about it. Let's go ahead and kind of mix kind of a yellow oxide color. So I'm going to get a little bit of yellow, and I get questions about this anyways, so it's good to kind of do it. Unbleached titanium. And then I'm going to use the this gray. It's got a little bit of blue, a little bit of burnt umber. Probably going to use a little bit more of the burnt umber because it's kind of turning it green. I don't want it to do that. But if you mix yellow with black, it will turn green. So um, just kind of know that going in to it. Um, when you're mixing a darker yellow, you probably want to use brown. <laughs> Although burnt umber does have black in it, it's kind of closer to like a burnt sienna plus black. But there we go. So there's, this is probably a little bit more brown than yellow oxide, but it's close enough. This will give us a kind of a brownish yellow to work with. If we want it warmer, kind of more of a orangey yellow, we could add burnt sienna to it. And we might do that when we're, as we're working. Thank you. You're welcome. All righty. So, let me see. Right there. That was our... Very good. Fun. I like these abstract backgrounds, they're fun to do. Alright, I'm going to that off. And then I'm going to get, I'm going to go ahead and just use white, I think, to draw here. Let me use my white pencil. This is a chalk pencil, chalk, charcoal, sorry, chalk, charcoal. Um, so I'm going to kind of figure out where I want it to be, just kind of use my finger to hold that pencil about, oh, inch and a half maybe from the bottom, maybe a little bit more, maybe closer to two. And I'm just gonna run my finger and that pencil across there. I might use a... Can you take your gloves off now? I'm gonna use my ruler. What? Can you take your gloves off now? Oh yes, I can take my gloves off, yeah. I thought you said clothes off. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Definitely Madam. Not doing that. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I would never say that. <laughs> what kind of boy do you think I am? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take that off and just use tape. <laughs> just easier. What are you taking off? I'm taking off my pencil line there. Oh, I'm okay. Just tape. All right, sorry. Shush. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm going to 
to come up about right there. That's good. Okay. I'll just mark that out right there, really firm. And oh, now my sponge is all gunked up. I don't want to do that. So I'll go ahead and use this one. This is a Deerfoot stippler. I'm going to go ahead and grab the gray. That definitely is green. I should not have used that. This color. Don't use this. <laughs> <laughs> Too much blue in it. Oh my gosh. That's funny. Okay. Um, I'm going to get that burnt or the black blue color. The blue and black. Wipe most of it out. And then just kind of lightly scumble right along that line. And we're just trying to create a, yeah, there we go. See, just kind of a soft, it doesn't, and we don't want it too dark. I don't want it really super obvious, but just kind of a soft line there. This will just darken it up enough to, we're like, okay, we can tell that there's something, that this is the wall and the foreground is starts right there. And scrub it up to soften that line. Perfect. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of scrub along there so that it's a little softened. I don't have I don't have any extra on my brush. Just kind of using what's left here and just kind of soften up that whole line so it doesn't look so obvious and you know perfect. Okay. That's it. That's all we're going to do for our foreground line. So let's draw. Okay. So our boots are sitting very low to the canvas. So about mm, halfway from here to here is where they're going to sit. So right in here. Leave yourself plenty of room because I've got this fall of flowers that I want to come out here so I'm going to make sure that my boot starts right in here somewhere um, let's see so halfway would be these leaves right here so there's some leaves coming out here and just past halfway is where this boot end is somewhere in here right and then this one is going to be Right about on the third is sort of the center of that boot, so it's going to be like right in here. So that'll be good. Just kind of mark out the outside borders of where you want your boots to go, and that'll give us a starting point. We already know where the bottoms of them are down here. So bring that out. Bottom, they're kind of a little bit rounded. The bottom in the middle here. It's just a dark crease down the middle. This one, this boot is looking straight at us. This one's kind of at an angle slightly. So it's, we've seen the toe right here and then it curves out into the toe. This one's curving out and rounding out a little bit right there. About where this toe is here. Well, I guess it is kind of higher right there. Yeah, it's above it's above this line a little bit. Comes down, then the sole comes out even farther. Curves down and then it curves up. Right here like that. And then disappears back in there. Somewhere like that. And this is all dark down there. So we're really not seeing the bottom of the boot. We're just seeing the darkness of the shadow that it casts. And then this boot. We're also seeing the curve. Let's see it curved up. There. Comes out a little bit from the side. And then... Yeah, about the same area there. Kind of 
dips in here. There's the toe is kind of facing us, so it's right in there. All right, there's the tongue. Okay, that's good. So where this split is, there is a piece of the uh, tongue. No, that's not the tongue. What is this part? The flaps that go on one side of it. The flaps, whatever. Um, there, the top of our boots somewhere in here. So, this curves in, this curves in. And then laces, cross, 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 laces. Okay, that's gonna be our boots there. And then we're gonna have all these flowers coming out here, flowers, flowers, leaves, all the way up to in here leaf. I'm going to use the softer chalk for this because I don't want it to mark up my canvas and go faster. So all the way out here, leaves, flowers coming down and into the toes, flowers coming out that way, flower, flower, all the way to the corner, rose, rose, and rose leaf actually doesn't come down that far. These roses are closer to this rose rose. That's why I like to use chalk. It moves stuff around. Um, yeah, rose right here. Okay, flower leaf. Leaves. All this is actually this yellow is not flowers, it's leaves. So we've got a lot of leaves to do. And yellow flowers. And little white flowers coming up here and here. Okay, so I'm just check checking my overall um, balance here, just making sure that I've got my boots kind of centered in the right place before I paint them in, obviously. Um, I want to make sure that I've got them sort of where I want them, make sure that they're placed in the right spot. But I think that's pretty good. Okay, so let's set that aside. Let's go and paint. I'm going to, let me see. I think I'm going to use the angle bright here. Six to do the boots and I'm going to use this dark dark brown I'm going to use the black for the middle part because it's pretty dark and just kind of blend it out into the sides there. I'm gonna go and use some of that gray from the background, mix that with the darker version. Make a medium gray. These boots are gray ish, so I'm just going to tap that in. I'm going to blend in each little bit as I go here. Um, I think this brush is going to be too big, but I'm going to go ahead and keep on going with it for now. So I'm going to do the inside of the shoe. Let's go ahead and use that darker blue color. And all the way up into where I'm going to do my flowers. Got this whole area dark. I'm just using a different color so that I kind of 
can differentiate it from the part in the middle here. I would never think to use my boots as a vase. <laughs> you know what you're missing out on, huh? I've been using them wrong all these years, I, I guess. I, don't, I just don't exactly. know what's been going on in my silly head. <laughs> I guess I should put those glass things on my feet and try to walk around. <laughs> Anything can be a vase. I've got flowers. Is it vase or vase? Vase. Okay. I say vase. You say vase. I don't know. No, I, I say depends vase. depends on the part of the world you live in, maybe. Like case. I'm kind of going around the rows there, just a little bit. Case like vase, yeah. But I do say case. aunt. You say what? Aunt. Aunt, yeah. Yeah, my aunt Nancy, she likes that Mark calls her aunt. <laughs> 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 Get the kick out of that. That's a good point. Somebody said that the flowers smell better than the boots. It's amazing. You, you can tell these boots haven't been used because <laughs> the flowers are still alive. <laughs> I got flowers for Valentine's Day. I was surprised. Me too. Mm -hmm. Got me flowers for Valentine's Day. <laughs> For pre Valentine's Day. Right. Pretty peachy roses. Very pretty. Just it's wait till tomorrow. You a few years. You finally figured out I don't really care for red roses. Well, you can't imagine the stress level <laughs> <coughs> in picking up flowers. <laughs> It's like, oh my god, did she say white or pink or <laughs> no? Okay, not red, I know that, but it's just. It's just. <laughs> Why I don't like red roses? It's kind of very, like a. Maybe the most popular color of roses. I just. I don't know. Okay. So just kind of mapping it out pretty, uh, keeping it pretty impressionistic style. So very kind of soft and stylish. And not stylish, but you know, stylized, I guess. Soft. So we need to get to Lowe's pretty early tomorrow. Why? For your Valentine's present. What's my Valentine's present? Remember Lowe's for couples? Oh gosh, was that on Valentine's Day? That yeah, they're doing it? yeah. Wow, yeah, they're doing a painting class on Lowe's at our local Lowe's. Well, I I don't know if it's a lo I'm sure it's a local Lowe's, but it was just like a general at all, article. At all Lowe's. Yeah. <laughs> Lowe's is a hardware store if you're not from U.S. We gotta get there early before the snow gets in so that we can you know have fun. Have fun and paint. It's uh, I was just talking about that to Mark about that. I was like gonna buy some more gouache because it's on sale <laughs> and uh, practice some more because I haven't used my gouache that I bought this summer very much at all. Like I've probably painted with it twice. And uh, so I was like, well, maybe if I buy some more colors, <laughs> I'll be motivated <laughs> to use it. That's my that's my excuse, at least. Uh, using dark black hair underneath the boots. And the fades to black underneath, so... We got a question. Okay. Uh, the person would like to know, how do you decide when to use softer or firmer brushes? 
Um, well, for this one, because I was doing the background so kind of impressionistic style and things, I decided to go ahead and go with the same style for the flowers and things. So um, that's why, I, you know, when I'm using, a, when I want kind of a more impressionistic type of look, that's when I use the firmer brushes because they just do a better job of kind of soft, soft brush strokes. And you can't get a firm line with them. You can't, you know, so I my tendency is to do clean lines and so if I use a brush where I just like literally can't do a clean line that keeps me from having that problem so that's usually why I used them I'm using the glazing medium on my dark gray here and I'm just blurring out that bottom edge and kind of adding a little bit of a shadow to the bottom of my boots here kind of making sure that I blend it out really well on both sides so that and I'm going to go ahead and put some here because those flowers are going to have a little bit of a shadow too. Okay, so there we go. That shadow should be black back here though, so make sure that that shadow is really, really dark down there. All right, and then, so that's our base. We'll definitely need to highlight these and do some more to them, but while, the, while I've got this large brush on, I'm going to go ahead and mix up some green and flowers and my paints didn't get dry by while I was doing this. I'm going to use some of this dark blue, blue black color and add that to my green. So if I really really dark green and I'm going to use this in my in between areas of my flowers. So even though my flowers um, and my you know Maybe all of these are going to be fairly light. There is still going to be some areas that are really dark that are kind of the in-between areas where the flowers are just shadowed, like, you know, maybe not an obvious leaf. So I'm just going to take this color and add some dark green and then use it to do some of my lines. I've smushed it flat, so it's got a nice firm... Uh, edge here. I'm just going to run some stems for some of these leaves. Kind of wiggle in a little bit. And then these leaves are a little bit more light green so I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit my yellow and just set the tip down and pull it down a little bit and then smush it to create my leaf shape. And I'm going to take it and smush it on this side a little bit. Okay, so there's my leaf there. Let's go ahead and smush another leaf right here. I want a little bit more of a stem on it or a little bit more of a tip and come back in and create that. If I don't get a good edge, then I just need to load it up with a little bit more paint and make sure that it's got a good firm tip on it, like by, by like chiseled edge is what I mean to say. So that if it's not, if the bristles aren't sticking together and forming a, like a firm line, it's not going to do it on your canvas. So if you want that, then you need to make sure you're loading your brush with it with it being like a nice straight line there. So there, and twisting it this way, and creating, wiggle it a little bit. I'm just creating some leaf shapes here. Okay. And then just kind of filling in the rest of these. Just another one coming out this way. I can also pull it the opposite way. So started some of these were going, you know, starting tip down and pulling from the tip down. But I can also do it the opposite way and end at the tip. 
that'll actually get you a small, a thinner line usually. So just depends on what kind of look you're going for. All right, so kind of nice leaves there. Go ahead and do a few more stems out here. I'm gonna get some brown burnt umber. There's some that are like sticks almost, so I'm gonna do some. Little sticks. And then this leaf here. Nice and dark right here, coming out. And there's other leaves that are gonna be kind of in between here, so I'm not gonna do them all yet. They'll be on top. Just leave that kind of rose shape here. The only reason I'm not messing with the rose is just because it's so it's such a bright color. I don't want to have to try to cover it with, you know, if I put too much of the green on top, just wouldn't I just have to do m more layers than I'm have to do so all right let's see let's go ahead and grab the number two filbert and we'll fill in our purple flowers so let's get the purple and ultramarine blue make a really bright brilliant pretty purple here Get some white, have that as my side color, and then I'll use the white as well. So I'm gonna just kind of load up both of these colors on my brush. I've got kind of all of them on here, and I'm just gonna start by laying my little individual petals. Mm, I need more of this dark color here. I'm just setting my brush down so that the rounded tip is creating the petal shape. Just by kind of setting it down. And pulling in towards the... And towards the middle. So as I'm working, I'm going changing direction so I'm going to start here and pull and just quickly kind of changing direction so that I'm constantly got the rounded tip facing out and I feel like the faster I go the better and more natural it looks so you know when I'm being like really careful about it and going slowly it just kind of seems like kind of static and forced so just kind of go quickly and once you get a feel for it, you know, as comfortable as you are, you know, as fast as you can and still feel like you're doing a good job. But I'm going to get some of that lighter color. This is really going to be kind of the base. We're going to be doing lighter colors on top of this. So this is kind of just the start of what we want. I'm going to do a couple so that these look like they're laying on the ground here. Let's do the same here. These ones are going that way. All right. These are a lot darker than what is in our photograph. So 
but that's okay. So we're, like I said, we're gonna be adding more white to them. I'll let those sit and I think I'm gonna work on the boots because that's kind of our main focal point. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those where I want them to be and then we'll continue to finish up the flowers. So we're only an hour in, That's we're doing good, making good time. All right, I'm gonna get the burnt sienna. I've switched to the blender, the number, the quarter inch blender here. So I'm gonna get the burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt umber, make a reddish brown here. And that's what I'm gonna use for the boot treads. Just setting it down and lifting upward. Right, those kind of teeth that you're seeing. This is, this is about the right size. It's pretty close to the size of the treads. And then at the top of it, I'm going to go across. So about how difficult would you rank this painting? Mm, I don't know. You know, I'm not good at that. I don't know. Um, getting the dark color here going about over the top. Um, it's like the boot part here is probably the hardest part. Flowers are super easy. So I'm going to put it at about a six. You just have to figure out out of what. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to use my unbleached titanium. Create a I use the dark gray there to kind of darken up the top of that reddish. I'm just going to kind of highlight. The bottom of those treads just a little bit. Really probably need a more of a squared edge. But this is doing alright. All right, and then there is like a little bit of it showing underneath, so I'm just going to pull down just a little bit. All right. Let's go ahead and use this dark brown that's got a little bit of the, this gray mixed in it and use it on the boot right here and just scrub between the dark area. And the top of the boot give it a little bit of a brown tone get a little bit more of that darker color and come in next to it and blend those two together and the boots are very like kind of you know worn leather texture so they've got a lot of kind of character to them so they're not like a smooth leather Texture show as you're doing this. And I'm gonna get some of that lighter gray. This is that brownish gray here. Maybe add a little bit of that warmer brown to it. I'm gonna use it at the very top of these boots, right at the toe. key is to not use too much paint. If you've got too much paint, it, it'll just, you're just laying down paint. You're not blending. So if 
you want it to blend out, you've got to kind of use a light touch with the paint. like a well not like a rubber boot but yeah we did a we did that you know, red rubber boot yeah like a red rubber boot or you could do it like a like a cowboy we did boot a, almost yeah, we with, did a with, cowboy boot what go ahead no that's fine that's we've right. done both of those things already i'm just saying if they want to keep it simple and oh, not right. have to do the tongue and laces they could just you know absolutely do it like that but yep. you you said that you've already done that so they can't you, you have to do. That. You have we to do this a harder. Skate. We did a, a, a ice skate. We've done several boot, you know, shoe shoe flower combos. We did red boots for autumn. We did cowboy boots with daisies in the summer, and then we've done the wintertime ski boots. So maybe this is our spring one. We've done four now. We should show them. I'll sh like. Do a, oh, like a uh, collage? Yeah, collage. Post it on my social media so you can see all four. It'd be kind of fun. I'm sure we'll do more. <laughs> I'm sure we can find Probably other things the last. <laughs> to stick flowers in. Exactly. <laughs> Still think I can go a little bit lighter, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep on adding more of this lighter color, get a little bit more of that light gray. And there, so a little bit there, a little bit there. It's actually a little higher there. Well, no, it's actually not. I had it in the right place. I hate it when I do that. Like fix it and not really fix it. Someone asked, what is the glazing medium that was mentioned? Uh, gold, uh, golden glazing medium. Golden paint. Or golden brand. Uh, she uses a gloss glazing liquid. Gloss glazing liquid, but I also have satin that I use too. So it depends on how much of a sheen you want. And not Charlie. No. <laughs> Burnt umber here. Get a little bit of the dark black. I feel like they're not quite where I want them to be, so I'm going to get some more of this light burnt umber. I'm sorry, burnt sienna, 
burnt umber, both with the unbleached titanium here. And I'm just going to kind of mark the bottom of these treads a little bit. squared off there we go so now we can see the tips of the boots a little bit better and then I'm going to use the black and go in between and below really mark that line I kind of do a triangle underneath, like a little bit fainter color. Okay. Probably getting fussy with this at this point, so I need to back off. I'm going to kind of just mess up the top of it a little bit with the black, just to kind of soften up that whole thing so it's not so perfect. And then let's do the same thing over here. gray here. I'm going to add a little bit more brown to it and just use it in the inside of that there and it comes in and kind of comes sharpening sharply back and then wraps down into that dark just disappears down in there and it should it should kind of turn at the same time it's the same place this one does so kind of right across from each other here and here and then same thing on here let's go ahead and kind of mark that front edge that leather it's just that front edge of that leather kind of sticking out at us catching the light there we go all right and then let's go ahead and mark just a few of the holes one two three 
really not seeing them on that side. This side you're seeing them pretty good. One. We're just doing the bottom because that's all we're seeing. Two. Three. There's one up there. Some more in there. Let's do a dark circle for where the laces go down in. Let's go ahead and do that dark here. And really, none of this, the rest of that's showing, so dark. Just above where we marked the rivets there. Okay, and then I'm going to get the burnt umber. Pretty good amount of it. Got a little bit of that black still left in my brush. I'm just going to use a little bit of that gray. Let's darken it up a little bit. Okay. And I think I'm going to switch brushes. So I've got a smaller, thinner line that I can make. So I think I'm going to use this brush. This is the two liner. We'll see if this works. If this is too floppy, I'll have to switch a smaller, shorter brush. But we'll see. So I can it's get control with this. What? It's the two liner. Number two li liner. It could be too floppy. Might be too floppy if it's too long, you know. So I'll just have to see as I go if if I'm able to control it or not. If I can't control it, then I'll have to switch to a smaller brush. Okay, so I'm going to go across here. This one does okay. It seems like it's doing okay. Cross. You can't go wrong with good one liner. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> oh my gosh, honey. You set me up for that one. <laughs> okay. Rounded. Mm, it goes under. Ah, I see. I know how to lace my shoes. <laughs> it goes from... I did that one wrong. Oh, no, that, that one actually was that way. Okay, so it goes around it and then comes underneath. This one is rounded over. And we're seeing kind of the round part coming out here. So on the outside of that shoe, it's got the outline of the laces hanging out the edge and then up here yeah I do need a smaller brush just this one's having to go too slow I can go faster if I've got a smaller brush and which one did you grab? Two aught round So just kind of random little laces there. titanium here and I'm just gonna tap over the top of these to create a little texture on the laces just 
just where the light would hit it. Hit it. here that I put in the wrong spot. Just right there. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Not loving the texture. I'm gonna kind of mess with that a little bit, I think. Get a little bit of the light gray. Just gonna run it across. more natural looking. Okay. getting my darker color, my brown here, and just kind of editing back over, shadowing them, making sure they kind of go dark as they go down in to the holes and things. All right. Let's do the other side. First one goes all the way across. And then they kind of crisscross. Oh, and then you've got the little piece hanging out. We'll have leaves and flowers and stuff in front here, so. here in the middle here that may or may not show. Okay. Get the highlight color here. A little bit of this light gray. A little bit of the Unbleached titanium. Yeah, I think it's better just do it this way than to do that rope texture. I didn't like the rope texture, so you can play with it and see what you like better, but I wasn't a fan of the rope looking. Or no laces. Hmm? Or no laces. I've seen that before. Or what, Nick? No No laces. laces, right. Yes, you could do no laces. Yes. Sorry. It's okay. Darken that up on the outside there. I have been hitting the hot chocolate early today, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's 
go do our flowers. We'll be done. So I'm gonna grab the number four short filbert here and start on my roses. So the color is kind of a red. If you've got like a naphthal crimson or naphthal red medium, that's probably this color. It's like a cherry red. It's brighter than the cadmium red medium. So using cadmium red light kind of helps create this bright red that we're looking for. And there are some areas that are really, really dark in here too, so we'll add those too. But I'm going to go ahead and start with this as kind of my base color. I'll just do my rose, kind of a oval shape. This one is a little bit wider, it's facing upward. You can see that green underneath, that's why we decided to leave this part open. And this one here is going on top of this leaf somewhat, so we're going to have to I'm going to have to use some white, so we'll grab some white. And to keep the white from looking pink, you can add just a touch of yellow, or, or orange, either one. But that will tone down that light version and make it more of a natural color. Not so bright pink. Okay, so I'm just going to add some of my... You just playing? You're just bored, aren't you? No, I was zooming in on that one oh. flower, and then you switched to the other one. I was like, "Oh no, no, back <laughs> up, back up, back up!" <laughs> I would never play over here. Come mm -hmm. on, seriously, <laughs> I am focused on yeah. everything you're doing and saying. Yes, of course. Just using the very tip of my brush to draw in the kind of ring of petals that goes around in a rose, leaving a little bit of the red showing. And we'll have to do this a couple of times to get it light enough, but this is going to be the beginning of our. Now you have several videos of roses where you show lots. the different techniques to right to yeah, do them. lots of different roses. Mm -hmm. And there's still a rose by any other name. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna while I've got this on my brush, I'm going to make a couple petals that have fallen down there. Okay. I wonder if there's any water in those boots to keep them alive. What? I wonder if there's any water in those boots to keep them alive. Uh, they probably got little jars. I guess that's a smarter way of doing it. <laughs> that's why you're a girl. That's what I would do. All right, so I'm going to try to... No, well, a little bit of that purple left for me. Spray everything down so it's starting to get dried out. There we go. I got a little bit of that purple left. Some white. What are you laughing at? Somebody said, Angela, paint Mark's nose red, please. For what? I guess because I'm being such a hilarious person today. <laughs> okay, you're going to have to zoom out because I'm... I'm zooming out. Thanks. So this is where we're going over the top and just barely setting it down and just kind of lifting and dragging to these hairs. Do the light purple, but then I'm going to also do some of these in blue so you can kind of leave some space for the blue to go. I'm going to do 
do some phthalo blue. Ooh, do not need that much of it. I'm gonna get ultramarine blue and phthalo blue both. this blue. There we go. And mix a little bit of this purple with it too. There we go. Okay. So some of these will do a little bit of blue. And which brush is this one here? This is the Filbert <clears throat> again. The to Filbert. The numbers don't um, always indicate the size though, you know. I mean it does within the particular line of brushes, but each line of brushes has their own sizing, so a number two in this might be totally different than a number two in another brush. This one's kind of a large number two, it seems like. I'll just kind of know that going in. I'm getting some of the sort of medium purple. So I don't want it to look too like unnatural. I just want it to kind of be not blend into what we've already got a little bit. So just using that kind of medium tone to kind of cause a transition between that really dark and the really, really light colors. What were you? I was just going to say, and that explains why artists don't build bridges. <laughs> why? Because the number two in each line is different. I mean, right. It's like they can't standardize no. the numbers or Very the sizes. True. So We can't even decide on our brush sizes. So we definitely don't want us building bridges. No. Agreed. Agreed. All right, and then getting the white, just the tiniest little bit of this purple, okay, and then going back in and doing you know, just a few like really bright, and this I keep it very random, very sparse. use this white and I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of this yellow that we mixed up just a tiniest little bit of it maybe a little bit of the ultramarine blue and black mixture here make a gray I'm going to use a little bit more of this blue here so I'm just kind of making a light blue gray so However you want to mix it, I'm just kind of grabbing different colors here. It doesn't really matter, but, you know, the exact mixture is just going to be kind of a light undertone. We have all these colors going on in our painting already, so it's going to, it's going to go no matter what color you make. All right, going to get some yellow and some green. I'm going to go ahead and add some burnt sienna to this green. That'll create a kind of a more neutral green, natural looking. And let's go ahead and use that and use it to create little leaves along our stem here. I'm just going to set my brush down and pull out to create little leaf shapes. And again, if I've got my brush pressed flat, then I can get little leaf shapes really easily just by setting my brush down and kind of flicking it outward. And you may have to practice this a little bit to get it, you know, to flow, but it's not. Mm, get a little bit of the darker even. Kind of do a little bit of both. 
little contrast with some darker leaves too. Lots of leaves on this thing. Okay, and then down here on top of my boot, there's a whole little line of these that go right on top. So let's get some of my unbleached titanium. Mix in some of this with my green that I've got going on here. And use this to create my little leaves that I can see on top of my boots here. And then I'm going to use a little bit of both of these greens to do some little stems in my in my purple. So I'm just going to try to find some open spots and just add a little green stem to my wisteria. And then some little leaves too around it. some different leaf shapes over the top of this dark it'll kind of help create a little bit of a shape here and I'm get a little bit of my darker color and just line out the edge of this leaf that goes right here it's peeking out between my roses right there get my darker color get that green with the brown black color mixed together and make sure it's nice and dark right up against my rose here the only part that's really highlighted is the very tip of it that's peeking out so everything else is pretty dark there we go there's another kind of leaf sort of peeking out right here get a little bit of that highlight color and just kind of define that edge of it right there poking down very subtle doesn't have to be real obvious the more subtle the better I think go let's use a little bit of this highlight color and just gonna go on top of the dark leaf that I've got there, adding a little bit of a stem and kind of just blending out the edges. Get a little bit more of the dark color. Creating a little bit of a modeling, different modeling, not modeling, mottled texture on it. Getting that black and my green. Making sure I've got it really dark right here. might do I think I see some another little slight leaf right here so I'm gonna do kind of just a hint of something right there just uh yeah there we go like the pear highlight and the very tip of this is pretty bright if I can get it to come off there we go There you go. 
And then again, right here. Okay. And then there's a leaf shape right here that's curving around it this way. I'm just using that dark to kind of define it. It's not, we're not having to do a whole lot to fill it in because it's already that dark. It's pretty much the whole leaf is going to be this color. All we're needing is the outline of it. Let's use, let's see, what brush do I want to use? I'm going to go and grab this one. This is the 3 8 inch angle. I don't have, they don't make the aspen in smaller. So I just need a smaller angle. I'd use this one if it was small enough, but it's not. Alright, I'm going to grab my yellow. And I grab, it's got a little bit of green in there, but that's, I don't care because I'm wanting it to have a little bit of a green and I need to clean off a spot. vivid yellow here and I'm going to grab some white so I have a little bit of white because I'm going to need a little bit of trend um, of opaque coverage because I've got such dark colors here so the white will help with that all right so I'm just going to start laying in some leaves with this and just Getting some kind of medium green, like green for some of the backgrounds, and I'm just going to kind of do some random. leafy like things in here Probably should have done this before I did my my rose. It's kind of hard when you've got these kind of images where you've got multiple things, you know, overlapping each other. So you just kind of have to try to figure out which ones to do first, you know, so that you have less to paint around later, you know. So I'm kind of having to paint around my rose here to keep from covering it up totally. And there's some leaves that are poking out behind gonna be a big green leaf here. Oh, I just covered that leaf. Oh well. Okay. And there's a big green leaf right here too that's gonna to be having to be painted around. Let's go ahead and do that while I'm at it. This dark glossy green leaf right here coming up over the top of these green ones we've had a request if you would be able to demonstrate the kind of stroke that you're doing on a piece of paper sure they didn't say they wanted to see it on camera so <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
just going to use what's on my brush here, and then I'll stop and show that real quick. This little leafy thing, this little branch thing comes over the top of these leaves, so. Oh. There's our tulips in the window that we're starting on. My bonus video. Not bonus, challenge image. This one for the dollar level folks okay so here's the leaf setting that brush down and just kind of twisting it a little bit and then sometimes going back and doing kind of another part of it to do a bigger leaf um, you can kind of do longer shapes too you know, this is kind of setting it at an angle this way and turning it half turn to get kind of more of a heart shaped bottom on it. Or I can just set it down at an, at an angle and kind of pull. And depending on how wide I pull, how wide I make this angle here when I start, it, it can go wider, I can push out. So, but that's, that's your basic leaf stroke. There's lots of different ways of doing it with the angle brush. These make it really easy to do leaves. So you can also pull down towards you and just kind of smush it down. That's what I was doing at first with the very first ones and just kind of fill it in. So all kinds of different ways to do. Thank you. And these ones that I did fast were just kind of flip-flopping in different directions. I wasn't really doing any particular stroke. I was just so kind of so timestamp. Figure out where we're at right now. We are what an hour and forty forty three minutes into this. Mm -hmm. And they can fast forward to that point later after this is done. Yeah. And they can even slow it down and watch it in slow motion too if they need Ooh, to. Fancy. Yeah, so they want to do that. And I know you have some other videos, too, where you've demonstrated leaves, mm -hmm. leaves and strokes yeah, I've got and a stuff. whole brush, uh, a whole leaf kind of video, which is quick tips with how to paint leaves. It's kind of more stylized leaves, not really realistic leaves, but it's this kind of style, I guess, kind of just very... Okay, it's these little, it's these little fill-in... Um, brush strokes though that will help make it look a little more natural because if you're if you're too um, if if you've got every bra every leaf kind of perfectly formed and facing you it doesn't look natural so some of the leaves are going to you know you've got a leaf shape some of them are going to be facing different directions so sometimes you're just going to see this little tip you know just this little angle um, maybe sometimes it'll be a line, um, and then sometimes you'll see the full flat leaf, you know, so, um, make sure that you're doing that when you're, um, doing these kind of leaves, you know, make sure you're leaving some that are just like a straight line, because that, that's what's, ha what's happening in a normal, you know, situation. You don't have a vase of flowers or leaves or whatever that are all perfectly turned towards you, you know, at any given time, so. make it look more realistic that way. So I'm going to go over the top here and just add some greens. Kind of some mottled color. And there is that dark in between, so make sure you're kind of leaving some of this dark color in between. I'm going to get a little bit more of the yellow green. And 
kind of just a little bit darker version of this light green here and just kind of do some of that on some of these leaves and just kind of adding little freckles there's you know they're kind of a variegated leaf it looks like and you could totally do flowers here though if you wanted to so flowers would be beautiful you know so if you wanted to do some daisies or you know something some other kind of filler flower you could totally do that instead of these leaves so if you prefer that um i i thought about doing that but i didn't have a reference photo handy so i like when i'm changing out a photograph painting um I like to have a photograph of some sort to work from. It just makes it easier to make it look like it fits and more realistic, you know, if I'm going for... This is a, you know, stylized realism. It's not it's not full, full realism, but I do want it to kind of still look kind of, you know, real. So I want to stick to... close to the original as I can. Okay, getting more of this dark green, this glossy green, that burnt, burnt umber gray here with the green. And then we'll get a little bit of the Highlight color, a bit of light yellow green here, and do a center down it. Maybe highlight the edge just a little bit. Not covering over here, so I'm going to get a little bit of white. side that'll help make it look kind of waxy Okay, and then let's just go back up to these ones here and get some of this kind of light yellow green here. And just maybe a little bit of white. And just add some highlights to these leaves. I'm just setting my brush down and kind of just dragging it and letting it kind of just skim along this leaf and add highlights here and there. Okay. Add a few of my white little flowers we're seeing. So this is that gray that we made. <laughs> Almost fully dry. Okay, good that. And we're just gonna start dabbing my little white flowers in here. Starting out gray. Well, they'll get white eventually, but for now we're gonna kind of do gray. These are actually I'm seeing a little bit more of that purple. So I'll do a few purple if I can get some purple. Right there. Get. I'm just doing clusters. They're kind of going on either side of these stems. I'm not really sure what kind of flowers these are. But they're. Let's 
This is just for the shadow areas here. You need a little bit of the gray for, even when you're doing white, you've got to have a little bit of a darker tone in there in places. Oh, wiping that out. I'm going to try to get my bright white here. Just a little bit of it left. And I'm just setting my brush down straight and plopping it down to get these kind of flower e shape, flower cluster shapes. Going over the top of the gray a little bit in places. That's all I'm doing. I'm not creating like obvious, you know, petals or anything. Just little clusters of dots. Your, your eye will fill in the rest. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, so now last little bit here. I'm going to get more of this red. Mix it with my white. A little bit of yellow. So I want a color that's a lot lighter than what we've got going on now. And I'm just going to use the tip of this brush. I can get it to do some small lines here for me. And just use it to highlight just a few little petals on my white rose. And I was going to go in here and do darker, but it's actually, because of that green underneath some of this red, it's actually not bad. So I don't think I'm going to have to do that. I think I'm just going to do this and see. I might do a little bit more just the red, but I don't think I'm going to have to do a, a darker red. Let's get the two round here, and I'm gonna have to mix up a little bit more of this red. Just gonna use it to. roses are kind of speckled they're not it's not like a smooth transition so the red is kind of a freckled red it's, it's a interesting color I think I will do just a slightly darker in the center of this rose here so I'm gonna get because it's facing us there's a little bit dark I'm gonna get a little bit of purple and add it to this magenta and just like right in here, just a little bit of darker magenta and maybe in the centers of these. This one you're not really seeing the center, but that one needed just a little bit. Okay. creating a kind of concentric circles almost like a spiral slightly but but you leave little gaps in it so it's not a continuous line um, when we're doing these roses okay. 
and the the edges sometimes go square you know where the petal folds so sometimes the highlight will be kind of squared off instead of rounded just practice look at real roses see what you're you know look at the individual petals as closely as you can see where the dark areas are where the light area where the light's hitting it all right i mixed up this whole color and i never used it um let's go ahead and use a little bit of the light green yellow color in my white flowers i'm seeing like a little bits of green dots in there so I went a little heavy on my flower petals here. I always do that. <laughs> I filled them in a little bit much, but hey, you know. Could be worse, I guess. I'm gonna try to make these more random shapes. And then just kind of spread them out a little bit. So kind of create some more randomness on the outside of these. Just slightly, if that made sense. I don't know, but. paper towel and just lightly dab try not to pick up any paint that's still wet and lightly dab off my chalk lines here see if I missed anything hopefully my boots are defined well because I still have a lot of chalk around them on this side it looks all right um, let me I do want to do some highlights on my petals that are sitting down here though. Just throw in a little bit of the highlight color on them so that they don't look so dark. Okay. Did I miss anything? Trying to see. Maybe there's probably another rose in here somewhere, but can't tell. No, I think I it, think I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And the painting is doing okay also. <laughs> Have you heard that one before? <laughs> A few times. That's all right. I don't mind. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, I think that was fun. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I did I did probably fill up that area, make my boots a little bit larger than it is in the reference photo, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I filled it up. But I definitely like the background. I you I really probably could have maybe gone a little bit darker cuz then now that I'm seeing, you know, it finished, I definitely can't really tell where I did that um stenciling at all, which is good and bad, but um, I probably would have preferred to see a little bit more of it um, still showing through, which I could still go through here and stencil again. I mean, there's nothing saying that I can't stencil at this point. I would just have to make sure that I don't go over my flowers when I do, you know. But you'll be able to see your, your you know, your flowers and things through it, so you could totally do that. And I've, I've stenciled toward the end of a project, too. All right, I think that's good. I was going to add a little bit of yellow here, but I don't think I need to. I, I, I think I like it, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave it. 
and uh, call it done. So let me sign it. Got a super chat. Awesome. I'm gonna figure out a way to dim the lights and have the the disco lights just really show up real well <clears throat> on the ceiling or something. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so we had a couple super chats today. Nice. The first one was from Bianca, and she says, "I have learned so much. I really enjoy your live detailed videos. You guys inspire me to grow as an artist. Thank Aww. you both for everything." Thank so Bianca. thank you, Bianca. And then the second one was from Marlene. And she says, sent with lots of love for what the both of you do. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, thank you. So thank you so much. You, both of you. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day to everyone. Hope you, um, even if you don't celebrate Valentine's Day, can hang out with somebody that you love today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let them know that uh, you care about them. Yeah, it's a nice day. You know, why not? Mm -hmm. We all need somebody to give us a hug now and then. True death. S safely, yes. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not quickly. D double mask, hashtag double mask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, not creepy. <laughs> Make sure you get permission first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want the traceable for this, uh, it's available on patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Uh, haven't made it yet. I'll use the finished painting and trace it and have it up uh, for you probably later on today or tomorrow. And then um, what else? We'll be back on, what day is it? This Today's Saturday. Saturday. We'll be so back Tuesday. Tuesday, we've got another in our Beginner Basics series. Um, if you want to sign up for my newsletter, it's available at thankfulart.com. You can also see um, all the different projects that we're working on, all the videos that are available through our Patreons. Um, so if you wanted to go there, you can check that out at thankfulart.com. Um, it's easier to see them there than on Patreon, sadly. Um, Patreon doesn't have like a gallery setting. So thankful art, we've got it all set up so that you can see all the vi videos that we've done um, for the $10 and $5 level folks. And we were going to next, next Sunday, we're going to be working on um, a... Hi, Fitz Pickle. You're distracting me. A mama um, lying in her baby cub. So um, that'll be next That's Saturday the for the level. $5 level. Mm -hmm. Bonus video. And then, um, again, the $10 level. I'll show you. Where what you started. The, the, we've only just started on this project, but it's the um, window with the tulips in it. So I showed that earlier, um, the drawing. But um, we're going to be. Finishing that up, you can see all of that um, on my schedule that I've got up um, on my YouTube community tab, too. So, anyhow, if you want to see what we're painting this month. Um, but, yeah, we'll be back on Tuesday. Sorry, I'm rambling now. Um, back on Tuesday for... Take that down so they can see the finished painting there. Yeah, there we go. Um, the... Uh, we're doing a sunset or sun actually sunrise with a tree so it'll be very simple we're going to simple um break it down um we're going to be using a lot of the techniques that we've already used in that series um and kind of combine them to do the simple landscapes so hopefully you join us for that on tuesday night and um oh, fitz pickle fitz pickle cam yeah, he got he got himself groomed yesterday and he came home and he's just like a big fluff ball <laughs> yeah, aren't you? A little big fluff ball. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's a cutie pie. <laughs> he's like, I can tell that you're done. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, for watching with us. We appreciate you. And um, hope you will, if you haven't yet, subscribe and come back. Join our newsletter if you want to know about what we've got coming on, you know, through throughout the month. Again, a nice way of keeping track of everything. YouTube doesn't always do a great job of notifying people, so it's kind of a, our way of being able to help you help, you know, <laughs> watch it, find our videos easier. <laughs> so we started doing that. We do a weekly newsletter, and uh, it's 
It's a lot of fun. All right. All the animals are coming out to play now. I'm going to do a couple more leaves out here, kind of coming around this way. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.